Combine that with a bill in the Senate to spend $52 billion, inflationary dollars, on helping technology companies compete with China, and you wonder, now what could possibly go wrong with all this? The answer, of course, is everything. Joining me now is Wall Street Journal editorial page uh, deputy editor and Fox business contributor, Dan Henniger. Dan, great to see you again. Thanks for being here. Dan. So how is the so-called whiteness of physics, to use their term, going to help America compete? Uh, not at all. And I have to agree with you. I was taken aback when I first looked at the headline. I wondered what they meant by whiteness in physics. Were they actually talking about the outer galaxy? Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not at all. They're talking about a physics classroom. And uh, they, you know, they've done some studies suggesting that uh, the white kids, uh, guys, hand their, put their hand up too often to answer questions, which sounds like something back in grade school. Uh, but there's a serious problem here, David. This grant was given, a half-million-dollar grant, by the National Science Foundation. That is an independent government agency. It has an annual budget of about $8 billion, and it funds something like 25% of all federally funded science research. The idea that the National Science Foundation would be underwriting marginal studies like mm -hmm. this uh, into critical race theory in physics classrooms, I think is really something yeah. of a small scandal. And, and as we've seen in, in climate science as well, sometimes these foundation grants, these federal foundation grants pump, they act, they act as a primer, as a pump primer uh, to increase funding in other, from other sources too, from the Ford Foundation, Rockefeller, et cetera. And, and sometimes these crazy ideas become policy. Well, Here's the tragedy. This Something like this throws the idea of merit completely out the window. And should there be more minorities in science and in physics? Absolutely. But the failure that they're not willing to address is the inability of big city public schools to educate students adequately. Absolutely. They have performed poorly in math and science. They arrive in high school. They have, I mean, to college. They have to take remedial classes. But that is a 40-year tragedy that they don't want to talk about. So no, the con now the conversation has shifted to the idea that they're underrepresented in, uh, in professions like physics. It is just changing the subject, and it is a tragedy that they have uh, so failed these kids. You know, I threw the compete with China uh, policy in there. It's, it's, a, it's a obviously a very separate program. Uh, but even Republicans in the Senate are for this 52 billion. It was anywhere from 50 to 300 billion at one point. This policy to to spend money to help U.S. companies compete, as if politicians know better than companies do about how to make them compete, primed with our tax dollars. I mean, it just shows, when when they spend money like this on teaching critical race theory and physics. Uh, you wonder how they would spend $52 billion on teaching companies how to compete with China. Exactly right. I mean, this is industrial policy on steroids. At the center of it, there's a serious issue once again, and this is the transfer of military, militarily uh, tech, uh, sensitive information to the Chinese. Now, we know that's a problem. But their solution to it is in part not only to regulate exports, but to transfer a lot of the production of some of these technologies like microchips back to the United States. Chuck Schumer is talking about having microchip production done in upstate New York. There is a reason most of it's done in South Korea and Taiwan. They do have the expertise. It's a highly complex mm -hmm. process. And the idea that the politicians in Washington are going to figure out where and how microchips should be manufactured in the United States is a recipe for the U.S. falling Absolutely. way, way behind. And by the way, at, the, at a tremendous cost, I mean, $52 billion yeah. ain't nothing, and we are facing horrible inflation here at home. This is not the time to be increasing that inflation by spending more money you don't have. Uh, quickly, Dan, I want to switch subjects and, and get your views on a couple of other things. The Supreme Court and how the, the media is just totally ignoring uh, the threat to a Supreme Court justice, a real threat by an armed individual uh, who is motivated by ideology, and yet the media is trying to avoid it. The president hasn't spoken specifically about it yet. What do you think? It's awful. Uh, you know, this was a threat against the Supreme Court justice. There were only nine justices. If a successful assassination attempt were carried out, the Supreme Court would be significantly damaged. Uh, you would think that if this were, say, 
someone demonstrating out this outside the house of Justice Sonia Sotomayor, it would be on the front page. But we know what the media did to Brett Kavanaugh during his nomination hearings. They uh, slimed him and tarred him. And it is just disconcerting. It's very sad, actually, as a member of long, you know, career long member of the media, the press, to see them behaving like this. But the partisanship is impossible to yeah. avoid. It is what it is. And very quickly, the January 6th committee, they had another go at it today. Uh, I don't know if you watch it, but what, what do you think of the whole process? It's obviously one sided. There's no pushback uh, from any of the charges that are being made. No, there's no uh, testimony being given. There's no rebuttal whatsoever. Uh, January 6th was a terrible event. Uh, I think we know most everything we needed to about it. Uh, if a committee like this were able to produce a full and complete report, that might be useful. But, David, look what the Democrats have done. The Russian collusion narrative for an hour and a half to chase Donald Trump, that was a fraud. The two impeachment attempts against him. Uh, now we have this. It is impossible not to interpret it as another Democratic event to just get Donald Trump and associate the Trump name with the Republican yep. Party. Yep. So. Dan Henninger, thank you very much, Dan. Good to see you. Appreciate it.